what are you doing differently to make it happen, to bring that feeling that not just the fans being excited, but something that they can be excited about beyond its game. You know, if I think if I had the answer to that, it would be, it would be you know, I'd snap my fingers. I, I think I've tried to listen. As much as anything, I think there's, uh, I think there's a personality to every job. I don't care where it is. I think, and in, in, in you have to fit it. Uh, you know, I, I I like to think that my simple small town Kansas roots, so to speak, fit. Um, I'm not a. I, I love the fact that. We got the South Farm right across from our practice facility, and when the wind blows, it smells like, ma that, like manure. I, I, tease, I tease stuff about that all the time. I grew up with that. <laughs> um, you know, I, people forget I lived in Dodge City, Kansas for five years, and when the wind blows out there and they say it's the smell of money, I tell them it's the smell of shit. It's because it's, it's not my money. And so, you know, I think it's, but I think it fits. And, and I think it's, uh, I'm about relationships. I'm about people, and and to be honest, that's I, I I enjoy I love college towns because it's real. It's about people, and it's not the hubbub of the city. And everything becomes everything becomes personal, and, and that's that's fun. We're going to try to do that. And, you know, I open my practices. I, I, I I'm not. I'm not I am who I am, and we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna be a team that plays hard. And you, and you won everything, so why why wouldn't you? Win? Yeah. I, it, you said that. And I, mean, <laughs> I, I mean, I and, and I don't mean that to sound, but but I believe in the process. Right. I believe in the way we 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 build it with young people. I believe in keeping it extremely, extremely, extremely simple. The game's not hard. It's, 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 it's a lot more about the relationships in the locker room and the effort than it is the, the X's and the O's, so to speak. And, and there's a lot of ways to, to skin a cat. I believe in the power of young people and watching them come together, and I work really hard at it. Building a team, there's probably different approaches there. System, or you build your system around the best players that you recruited. You seem to be more the guy that likes to recruit towards the system. Is that correct? What is the philosophy behind that? Why do you think that's the best approach? You know, I, I, I think it allows continuity. I, I think there's I think there's certain ways to win today. I think we the positionless. You go look at my teams and see that we're positionless. Um, that's kind of the thing now. Um, I like good basketball players. I like skill. Um, uh, I think there's a, an advantage to, to having guys who can make baskets. I think you win the NCAA tournament. Um, with the guys who can make baskets, you can't just have one or two. And yet, defense will win the championship. And, but I, I, I like, and I use the phrase a lot, to try to win off the court so we can win on the court. And I want to recruit character, not characters. And I want my best friends in life, my college teammates. I want that for all of us. For all of us. I don't want it to be... I want to be good, good people in the locker room, good guys, and, and, keep it, and, we, and we have that. Right. Is it fair to say that when Hugs hired you, that was kind of your big break? Oh, no doubt. It's, can you sort of explain how that came about? I mean, you're coaching junior college. And, I mean, did you, how, did you, how you got to know him, why, you know, why he, you know, because he's in Cincinnati at the time. So how did that connection happen? That was a 15-year relationship. And uh, I was a coach at Dodge City Community College. I got the job at a very young age. And uh, had a player that he recruited. And, and Who was that? A young man named Art Long. Okay. And Art was the <laughs> guy that punched the horse, yes. and that was him. Allegedly. And, yes. So, he, did, he did beat that charge. So, but... Uh, I was I was a young impressionable coach, and I was, was so impressed with the fact that Hugs recruited, not an assistant coach, 
He came in, and it was never about the play. It was come in early, and let's spend time talking. Stay after practice. Let's go to dinner. It was. It was never just get in and get out. It was. It was. It was an unbelievable relationship. And I go to Western Illinois. And we see each other on the road. It's, it's, it's always friendly. It was. It was just a relationship. I mean, the relationship started and was was nurtured. And, and I'm a Daytona Beach, and, and it's Kansas State's my alma mater. And, he gets he gets the call and and uh, it was it was it was not even a decision. I mean, it was how fast can I get there? And and um, great great coach, way better human being. And I, and I mean I I, I love Bob Hogan. Yeah. And, and, you know, I tell the story all the time. The day he left Manhattan, and I was sitting on the couch with my wife, and uh, he was getting on the plane to go to West Virginia, and I look over, and my wife is in tears. And I looked and said, really? She said, I love that. And he, treated, he treated everybody with a tremendous amount of respect, and was generous and kind, and, and that's how that relationship started. So, yeah, without, it, without hugs, I'm still coaching at Daytona Beach and enjoying six weeks of spring break. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Appreciate it. Good to see you. Talk about uh, how Greg and Matisse have developed in the you know the, since the beginning of practice. Oh, they've grown leaps and bounds. Uh, Greg has come so far since he got on campus in terms of. You know, he's added 23 pounds. He's changed physically. Uh, he's got a better understanding of what we're doing, what the weight room is. Uh, Matisse, on the other hand, is, wasn't with us. He played for his, 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 his country, the World Championships, and, and everything has been a big adjustment for him. So he's uh, not only getting used to American food, but getting used to the weight room and getting used to uh, a different style of play. Uh, had his best practice of the year yesterday, and uh, that's encouraging because he's got a at six ten. He's got a skill set that uh, is fabulous, second to none. And shooter, ball handler, passer, his IQ is through the roof. Uh, and I think he's getting more comfortable day by day. But those are two guys that I think have uh, huge upsides. Greg's our best athlete, uh, bar none. A great runner. Uh, plays above the rim, gets rebounds above the rim, and, and both those guys are going to have opportunities as, as, as a freshman to uh, contribute and help us. Why do you go treadmill versus just having guys to laps? Great question. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> just one, I, I don't know. Just one of those deals right there. They're soft. But I don't, I don't, you know, I don't know. Uh, they go faster. Yeah, that's what I thought. <laughs> I to set it. We so, do. I mean, right. we, we want it to be a, a memorable moment for them. <laughs> but uh, but it's been um, it's been a lot. It's been a, a, a lot of fun as well. Uh, and guys know, and it's it's. Uh, so they like to avoid it. Let's put it that way. Yeah, a lot of fun for who? <laughs> I think they. I think we've had a lot of fun over the over the years with yeah. guys and their experiences on the freshman. Huh. Is, is that part of the plan for you? Like you I, know, those guys can talk to somebody yeah. from Western Illinois and say, yeah. "Hey, the treadmill, yeah. Yeah. treadmill," and they can go back to a lot of guys down the road and they they yeah. do a treadmill. The guys you know what's what that's about. And every coaching staff is that. Is that um, thing? I think it was different when I was a junior college coach because I didn't have enough money to get treadmills. <laughs> so, you know, there's something else. But, um, but yeah, it's, 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 um, it's been a great teaching house. Michael said he's only three or four, but she said he's on the low side. Can you confirm that roughly that number is about right? Yeah, i got to work on that. <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> That's what gets her mouth and off. <laughs> Uh, Michael does a lot of things right, so, and that's, uh, 
that's a, that's a tribute to him. So some guys aren't on there as frequently as others, but uh, you know, Michael's on Michael's on the good side. Yeah. Oh, that's your I, you know, yeah. yeah I'm, <laughs> you thought I? I'm like, like a magician. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay. Good talking. Yes, yeah, so I understand, but he's not. Uh, DeMonte, apart from the rebounding, what are the? Is he still leading through all the practices? He leading the team great. in rebounding. Yeah, he's been great. He's uh, one of our top assist guys. He's uh, he's got the it factor. I don't know how to describe it. He makes the right plays. He, he chases the ball. He hunts the ball. Uh, he's shooting it better. Um, getting more comfortable with, with the, the, the the things we're doing offensively. So, yeah, I've been I've been I've been pleased with every facet of his game. He's got a chance, I think, to be an elite defender, uh, both on the ball and off the ball. Uh, so I'm he, he he's 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 been he's been very very uh, uh, productive through the first 14 practices. When you say that somebody's going to start for a secret scrimmage, um, that's that's not announcing your starters. But furthermore, does it really matter at the tempo that you want to play who the starters are? Nope. Nope. <laughs> Over to you. I want to make sure you're all done. Tom. We'll yeah. Hey, Rob Russo with the Associated Press. Good to see you. Asking sort of all the coaches, in light of the scandal, the, the FBI investigation, you hate to sort of spin it as, well, what good can come of it? But is there anything as a coach that you look at and say, if this leads to this change, maybe we've gotten the ball forward here? I think there's a lot of speculation. I don't think we know what the change is. Sure. Are, are going to be. I'm not one to, to, to speculate a lot. But I think that, that in any sport, any time there's a speed bump, so to speak, uh, and change happens, it's huge. Right? And so you know, we'll see what, what change happens and, and what, actually what that is. I think there's uh, uh, a lot to be determined yet as, as things are still still pending. Some of the, the other part of that, some of the irony is college basketball on the court was pretty good. It like, was better last year. I think generally people, like, you know, the rules made things a little better. I, I, don't, I don't know. I don't want to put that in your mouth. But how do you see the product itself sort of growing now that, you know, these rule changes have been in place? Do you see that this sort of progression to kids getting more comfortable, coaches being more comfortable? Coaching in, you know, a slightly new style of college basketball. Well, I think that the impact of the rules of that has been dramatic, and I think that that it, it was it was time for uh, some things to change in, in, in those areas. Uh, obviously, scoring's gone up. That's uh, that's the one thing that uh, I think we, we continue to work on trying to. You know, keep games at a two-hour time limit. I think those are those are other things that have, that have impacted the game as well. Uh, we've got the greatest game going. I, there's nothing greater than, than March Madness and, and, and the, the popularity of the sport and is, is is unwavering. So, uh, you know, as we continue to play positionless basketball and, and we we see that change, um, I think we'll see. Scoring continue to go up because we're we're looking at, uh, and I use Golden State as maybe the best example. Teams utilizing the three point line and and the unselfish play and playing fast and, and up tempo and that's what we've tried to do a, a little bit of in, in our philosophy is, is 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 recreate some of that. Right. You've embraced it. You've already embraced that style. Um, and I, I, I guess we would imagine that. Other coaches may have to sort of see what the effects are before they sort of start moving in that in that direction. Do you anticipate maybe more of that style right. becoming what you face as opposed to what you are? I think so. I think over time. I think uh, you know I've used analytics as a, as a big piece of my uh, uh, philosophical changes, maybe. Um, 
and uh, and then it's it's about recruiting. It's about recruit, recruiting a skill set that uh, that can play that way. And I literally not not overly consumed with size. You know, if you find six nine or six ten guys and they they can do all the things that, that, we, that we need done on the court to, to have mismatches and so on. We don't play that way. But I, well, I think that the, the game and the, and, and the way kids approach the game is all based on what they see on, on the NBA. Right? And when kids start seeing that, they see the Kevin Durant shooting threes and that. We're going to... We're going to move in that direction. You're going to have to. The, the kids are moving. Yeah, that absolutely. <laughs> and, and, you know, we're one of the only, if not the only country in the world that plays by different rules. Um, I think as the shot clock is continues to be lowered, um, I think at some point there will be some uniformity to, to our rules. But uh, uh, the shot clock went down five seconds. I want to make my change. Appreciate it. Thank Welcome you. The new gig. Thank Appreciate you. Appreciate entertaining those big picture questions. Thank you. Uh, I think Kipper Nichols is more of a, an interior or a wing, or does that not matter either? He's a good player. He's going to play everywhere. He's probably one of our better shooters. Um, I think he proved that out last year. I think he's the leading returning three point shooter. Uh, but I think he can be an elite rebounder. And the one thing I think he can do is guard multiple positions. Mm -hmm. And that's a versatility that I'm really excited about because I think he can guard one through four. Uh, maybe fives, I don't know. Uh, he's so strong. Uh, very gifted athletically. And uh, we'll, uh, we'll continue to grow that. As, as the season progresses, I think he can score in the post. I think he can score in the, in, in be an effective uh, mid-range guy, driving it from the elbows and, and getting to the foul line, as well as extending his range to, uh, to the three-point line. You say that height doesn't matter for interior defense. Um, to some degree, it might matter if you're trying to post up a guy on offense, but it depends on how tall you are versus that other guy. So are you? do, do you have things like the Bo Ryan swing offense where you're going to be posting up guards? Yeah, we've got a lot of that in our spread. And I think the one thing that we, uh, uh, are, in most years, our best, uh, most best post players have been guards. In some years, I think this year could be one with Michael. You could see some of our best three-point shooters be bigs. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we, we try to take advantage of those mismatches as, as often as we can. And then we try to uh, uh, pick on the other team's worst defender. Uh, I think that's a scouting thing we look for. And then uh, uh, ultimately, ultimately, I want the five best players on the court as much of the game as I can have them. And I say that, and, and we play a lot of guys. But if you can put guys who can do a variety of things on the court, pass, dribble, shoot, uh, we're going to have them on the court as, as often as we can. Last week I asked the, the players, what's more dangerous for international security and the future of humanity? Is it Kim Jong-un or Leron Black's elbows? And uh, they all said the same thing. It wasn't the guy from North, no. North Korea? No. <laughs> Mark Smith may rank up there too with with Laron. Yeah, see, see what it did to T John. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Over to you guys. Hi guys. Hi coach. How are you doing? Coach Don Docks, Eastern City. How are you? Josh Adams, College of Nice to meet you. Good coach. to see you. So your, last time I covered you, it was at the Barclays Center. Who? With Stephen F. Halsey. Reminded me of that. Uh, a good night and a tough, tough loss that I still haven't got over. Oh still, man. I'm uh, still seeing Rex Fluger's uh, body flailing. He, he had one of his four offensive rebounds on the season and, and it, as it went through the net. And uh, uh, no, I, those were those were uh, it was a lot of fun. It was a great, great team. And, uh, the team sort of took the nation by, by storm. I mean, suddenly Stephen F. Austin was. Yeah, I was. 
on everyone. That was a that was a group of guys that, that had extremely high character, great work ethic. Um, you. Uh, it was fun to watch them grow, and I mean, it was you know Thomas Walkup when I got him as a sophomore was not near the player Thomas Walkup was as a senior and you know, going 19 for 20 and being against West Virginia, and literally being the best player on the court. You know. But uh, yeah, they're still I'm still hurting over the still, Notre, still, I'm still hurting over the Notre Dame loss. I understand. I understand. Now, as you go look at the sort of the market that you're in now, what sort of inroads do you have, you know, in your head to make sure that you know homegrown talent sticks around? Well, I, you know, I think, and I've said this many times, I think the one thing that Illinois has to do is inspire. And when I was in the state in the, in the '90s at Western Illinois University. Uh, Illinois had a lot of swag, yeah. and uh, it had it had a, a power feeling about it that was like no other. And every kid wanted to go there, and every fan, you know, was, we didn't want to we didn't want to play the same night Illinois played because all of our fans were going to Champagne mm -hmm. and, and not to our game. And, so it was, it was, it was erratic, but we, we've got to create that, and I think we've got a fan base that's exciting, I think our style of play is exciting, we've got a fabulous arena, um, just renovated, just renovated, mm -hmm. and I think that um, we will become a for and, and, and a place that all the players in the state that, that, uh, that we want to be. I think it will be a place they want to go. We've got wonderful academics. We've got a great athletic director who's leading charges. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a good place to be. I don't know if you're say about the office in general that you want to decide if you want to coach here. We've got a coach like Archie Miller, hired at Indiana, and a coach like Chris Hogan, hired at Ohio State, all of them won. I mean, best conference in the country. I think that's. I think it's very simple. I think that it's a place we all want to be. I think everybody recognizes that that uh, there's there's unbelievable fan support. There's unbelievable passion in the Midwest for basketball. And, uh, I think that uh, the, the area that, that players. There's a, there's a certain identity to basketball in the Midwest. I think we all value that. I do. And, uh, uh, but I, 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 I'm excited to be here. And, uh, and I'm sure those guys are as well. And, and uh, the opportunity arises. Uh, no brainer. You can see yourself here for a long time. Absolutely. I'm living my dreams. Yeah. So. I said that when I got to Stephen F. Goff, and, and, and my administrative assistant asked me what it was. I said, and, and, and I think you can win the national championship. And, and uh, Bruce was a whisker away from doing that. And, and, and uh, you know, Ron and Bill had great, great success, and as did Lou. And there's not many programs out there where you can say, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Coach, what uh, <clears throat> these guys obviously are loyal to previous coaches. A lot of them certainly agree. What do you need to do? What's the uh, it's communication, relationships. Um, I say this, you know, change can be good, change can be difficult. And, and uh, I think these guys have, have both given me an opportunity to. to to, to coach him, um, but if, 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 if I don't relay the message that I'm here to help them achieve their goals and, and reach their dreams, then they're not going to buy it. That's all my job is. And uh, uh, this group has moved back out of hard. It's different. And yet, uh, been so receptive that it's, it's been one of the great pleasures of going to the going to the practice for everyone. I wanted to ask you about the FBI investigation. At least one coach has said he thinks this could be a good thing. 
to get someone from the FBI, they can get the places that they don't want to I think that any time there's a speed bump in any sport and change occurs, it's usually something. And I think, you know, what that is right now, I don't know if anybody knows that answer, but, but I think when there's, when there's, uh, there's an opportunity to make a change, then we can... We, we usually we usually make a change in the game that comes out. We got a we got a damn good game and a popular game. We'll continue to, to see it grow. I missed him by a year. Yeah, yeah Clutch, you got no question. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Do you use analytics all the program? All the time. Oh, you do. Built, I built built my program on. Put my style on it. That's why we score in seven seconds or less. It's the weak, weakest part of any defense. The numbers show that. All right, Derek's giving me the signal. I got to go talk to Leron. We got to take you to see.